Folks, my next guest is a best-selling author who has been scaring you for over 40 years. His latest novel is The Institute. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Stephen King. <laughs> Nice to see you again. Yeah, well, it's nice to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for wearing what uh, counts as formal attire in Maine. Hey, this is my man of the people outfit. Oh, of course. Of course. And you, you're such a writer, you have a pen in your pocket ready to go <laughs> at a moment's notice. I expect you to thank finish you, a novel. Thank you, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, sure. There you go. Now, uh, this week we've had on uh, Bill Skarsgård right. and James McAvoy, stars of It. Uh, chapter two, of right. course, which you wrote in 1986. But I, I learned that you, I just learned actually, that you actually also appear in the film. Um, there you are, right there. Can yep. you tell me, who, who are you playing in this film? I'm playing a crotchety old antique store dealer who basically screws the main character out of uh, his childhood bike and charges him $300, which is a really Yankee thing to do. <laughs> well, The Institute, your, your, your new book, is a 61st novel. Um, yeah. This is... <laughs> Uh, this one is about uh, certain children taken away from parents and, mm -hmm. and locked up. Right. Nothing like that would ever happen. No. In Not in these United States. No, no, no. Um, uh, did the world influence you? Did our present political situation influence you in, in, in writing this book? Well, before the, 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 I started writing that, uh, that was not on the front burner, the idea of interning children at the border. But... Uh, the times ever since Donald Trump has been elected president have been extremely nervous making for a lot of people. And that was on my mind too. And uh, the whole thing about uh, everybody from Mexico, it seemed like in Mr. Trump's mind anyway, were bad hombres and that sort of thing. You, you don't write, a, I, I try to keep my politics and my stories separate but they bleed over one into the other because I also live a life, and uh, these have been kind of dark times. You, do you still block the president on Twitter? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Because, because, you know, I have a fairly high tolerance for crap, but there comes <laughs> a certain point where you gotta just you turn gotta it cut off. cut it off before you need a snorkel. That's exactly no. right. But you, you, do, you do engage in some politics on Twitter. This is uh, uh, one from just a few days ago. Hey, hey, ho, 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 ho. Susan Collins has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fan? Not a fan of Senator Collins, your, your senator from Maine? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, Susan Collins has been uh, there for about 1,000 years, and it's time for somebody a little newer and somebody who's got a little bit of a... A little bit more of a liberal bent. She claims to have a liberal bent, but really, that's not true. So, so. you dedicate this book to your grandsons. Yep. Do they help you write uh, the voices of children today? Well, I think like most grandpas, I'm pretty much ignored unless they want the keys to the car. They're old enough to drive now, mm -hmm. you know, or unless they need a little money, but... What I can do is... Wow. I Grandpa can... just threw the grandsons under the bus right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Backed over <laughs> them, okay? You're rotten kids. But no, You're they're... rotten kids. No, no, they're, they're good kids. But the thing is, they also... I'm able to strip mine their language and some of their attitude on life, particularly when they were younger. So it's just like you have to be kind of a fly on the wall and take in the language and take in the shows and stuff. But... I like to write about kids because they have a unique view. And also, they're people who are uh, pretty much vulnerable to the adult world. And that's what I wrote about a little bit in the Institute. I wanted to see kids kind of get up on their hind legs and, you know, fight the power. You understand? Well, this is... 
You're, uh, you're 72 uh, this week, right? You're turning 72 this week? Yeah, I'm 72. Okay, and this is your 61st book. Do you have right. a target number of books you're going for? Is there, is there a certain point at which like, you will stop? Is retirement in any way an option for you? Uh, God will tell me when to retire. He'll say, get out of the game, hang up your jock, you're done. But until then, I mean, this is the best job in the world because nobody can make you retire like at a mandatory age. You can just continue as long, until you start to drivel. And then at that point, <laughs> it might be a good time for somebody to say, you know what, Steve, you ought to, you ought to stop. So, but I think that for now, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And uh, I get to be on the Colbert Show, which is not a bad deal. <laughs> A lot of adaptations. You've got, you, you, you've got, of course, uh, It, Chapter 2. Uh, Dr. Sleep is coming out in November, which is right. a sequel to uh, The Shining. Yep. Uh, the Stand on CBS All Access. All Access. And the Outsider on HBO starts in January. And then you're working on something with J.J. Abrams, too. No, wait. I'm not done. <laughs> Mr. Mercedes starts tonight on DirecTV. Wow. I think so. There's a bunch of stuff like that, so... What are you doing with J.J.? J.J., we're, we're going to do an adaptation of a book I wrote called Lisey's Story. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be... Julianne Moore is going to be in it. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And are, is J.J. Nice doing the adaptation, or are you doing the adaptation? I'm doing the adaptation, but J.J. signs the checks, which is cool. <laughs> He's a good man. Yeah, he He's is a, a good man. man. You know him. I right? do, yeah. You took a walk with him, like, ten blocks or something, didn't you, at one time? Yeah, from me, we took the whole audience down to a Broadway show that he was producing. Nice. Did they get in? Did the audience get in free? Not these people, but another <laughs> audience got in. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. The Institute is available now. Mr. Stephen King, everybody. <laughs>